Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting Minecraft tutorial. I'm Tyken and today I'm going to show you how to make Minecraft blocks in real life. Uh, first of all, you need some sort of image editing program or uh, paint.net is the one I prefer. Although Photoshop or GIMP other people use as well. I'm not sure how well Microsoft Paint works, but you can try it. Uh, anyway, I open up paint.net and today I'm going to be making a special gift for a friend, Glimmer. So I'm taking his special, uh, his texture pack. Uh, first, all, first of all, you're going to want to grab the PNG file, which is, of course, the one that's going to have all the textures on it. And this right here should be his furnace. Uh, I think this is the front of it, these are the sides, and this is the top. Uh, anyway, next what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up uh, two extra tabs. Uh, the first one's going to be 32 by 32 because that's the size of the, the texture itself. And then we're going to open up a new one. Instead of by pixels, we're going to be doing it by inches. And you can, you know, select different things here. Um, it, it depends, of course, what kind of uh, measurement system you use. But uh, most standard paper is 8.5 inches by 11 inches. So that's exactly where we're going to make this. Ooh, um, except it's the other way that I normally do it. So I just flip it um, 11 by 8, or you can... Uh, for this, you can just easily flip it with uh, image and just flip or rotate. So I rotated it. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this texture. It's going to be it's a 32 texture pack, so 32 by 32. Try to get it all if you can. You're going to want to paste. Well, actually, we're going to want to do the top and the bottom first. Uh, this is going to be the top and the bottom, so you don't really have to worry too much about that. Uh, just do it once. Uh, you're going to want to resize it 100 by 100 pixels. Oh, um, when you resize it, uh, you'll want to do uh, resampling is going to be nearest neighbor. Uh, nearest neighbor. Uh, if you pick any of these other ones, it's going to probably come out really crappily. Um, you can try the other ones, see if they come out better, but this is the, the method I generally use. Uh, as you can see here too, um, for this project we're going to be using one inch wooden cubes and this comes out to be roughly a little over an inch and of course each side is going to be an inch so this is perfect because you always want to have a little bit extra just to make sure you cover the entire surface uh, anyway we're going to copy this over now like so uh, next is going to be a little bit more complicated you're going to take the sides of the furnace and i missed a column there we go 32 by 32 um, you're going to want to resize this as well, uh, 100 by 100. Uh, what I do is I take just the top 20 pixels, like so. Uh, you can also make a new tab to make this easier. Exactly the same size. When you copy an image, it automatically uh, scales it to size. Uh, what you do here is you just drag them and connect them to the uh, top, and then you just keep rotating it uh, to fit the sides doesn't have to be perfect uh, just to keep rotating it uh, it's control G I believe if you're using paint.net so I'm making it really easy for myself uh, there we go and then last one is on the side like that and then you want to zoom in to make sure you don't make a mistake and there you go uh, what these little uh, flaps do is it allows you to wrap it around the cube that way you don't have any white from the paper showing and you don't have any uh, wood exposed so it's perfectly wrapped um, well I'll explain the process more but for right now this is what you're going to want to do and oh I'm showing you how to make this uh, from any texture pack uh, I'm going to have the ones uh, I made myself pr uh, or pre-made rather uh, uh, posted in the links below or somewhere on my blog that way you know you can already you don't have to do all this but if you want if you have a little bit of editing skill and you want to do it from another texture pack I'm, I'm showing you how to do it from scratch uh, anyway this is the top and bottom uh, luckily the furnace shares tops and bottoms so we don't have to make a separate one for each um, next we're going to want to drop this back down to 32 you can just uh, go back until you know, you reached your previous process. Uh, what I generally do is I do 99 width and 98 
height, height, whatever. Um, messed that up, but we got it. Um, because uh, the furnace is going to be slightly more complicated, what you're going to want to do for this is you're going to uh, paste paste four of these, like so. Have a little bit of space between each one of them. Um, the reason I do the furnaces, anything that has a face that's sensitive, like if you're doing dirt, you can just put them all together and wrap it around. I'll be showing you how to do that with a simpler block in a little bit. But for now, we're doing the furnace, which is slightly more complicated. Uh, the reason I'm doing a furnace is because, uh, according to Glimmer, that's his favorite um, block with his texture pack. Again, we're going to be taking... Um, 20 off the side just so we have a little bit of extra flap and then we're going to be <clears throat> pasting it like so on each of these you want to line it up uh, if you get it off by a pixel or two it doesn't really matter that much but normally lining up perfectly really does help or, or alternatively we, what you can do is just paste down one and then copy that and paste it over and over um, it also helps you have less space in between, but for now we're just giving a little bit extra room. Um, actually, I think I messed up for a moment. That is the front of the furnace. Uh, these are the sides. No, that's the. Uh, that would be the dispenser. These are the sides. Okay, so we're going to have to paste these over it anyway. Uh, again, you want to bring it back to 32, uh, go up to 99 by 98 just because I feel like that gives it just the right measurements. Um, and then since we only need one with the front face, we can just paste these over the front of these, and you have your sides. So we have three sides and one face, then we have the top and bottom, and we're done. This is all you need to make the uh, a furnace. Uh, again, the reason I have the, flab the flaps is so you have a little bit of extra room to play with, as well as, uh, you know, uh, you can line these up much easier. Uh, like with chests, furnaces, anything that requires you to connect it directly to the top, like this one, it would look weird if this was over just an, like a, a little bit, like a pixel or two. It would look off. Um, so those definitely sensitive to where they're facing. Uh, now we're going to do a simpler one. He also said he loves bricks. So we're going to take brick... And we're going to, of course, drop it here and resize it to 100 as well. Uh, then we're going to drop it down here. Uh, you can compact this more. You can fit up to at least five different blocks on this thing, depending on you know what you're doing. Um, if you're new, I definitely recommend giving a little bit more space. That way you have you know more room to cut and you're not you know messing up too much. Mm. Again, you're going to take the first 20 pixels off the top. Uh, you're going to want to, uh, yeah, expand. Um, should be 100 by 20. Take these, and you just paste them along here. Uh, what this does is, since the top of your brick is going to be, like, it doesn't match from here, obviously, but since the top of your brick from the other ones are going to be the ones that are connecting to it, you'll want to have these since you don't want the uh, top to spill over the sides. Uh, then you just keep flipping, pasting, ooh, uh, wrong image to paste it on. And then last one, flip once more, and pretty much wrong one again. <laughs> You're pretty much done. There we go. Actually, I think I did that backwards. I think it's... No, 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 that should be right. That should be right. Okay. And we are done. As far as I can tell, at least. Yeah, that one should be in the top corner anyway. Okay. I think. Unless it's messing up somehow. But we're, we should be good. Um, we've got this. Now we can scale it back. Uh, take the tops and the bottoms, since they're going to be the same as well. And you can just paste it again, since you'll need two. You know, one for the top and one for the bottom. Uh, then we're going to... Crap. We're going to have to copy the brick again, since I went back too far. Uh, go to 99.98. Again, this is really simple uh, process. 
And then down here, it's as simple as copying and pasting them right up against each other. Since this one, it isn't really sensitive with the top and bottom since they're not going to really wrap around and uh, mesh well. So there you go. We've got this. We've got our uh, furnace and we've got our brick. Now all you have to do is save. Uh, save it as, uh, well, we'll save it as Glimmer since I'm making the gift for him. Okay, uh, now it's as simple as printing it out. Again, uh, the the size of you know uh, the canvas that you're pasting these on should be eight and a half by eleven inches. You can either do it long ways or like sideways like this because it's easier for me to do it like this in my opinion, or you can do it facing up. Um, it doesn't matter which way it faces as long as it's that size. Um, it matches the paper, so change your measurements to match your paper and you should be good. Uh, now we're going to be uh, moving on to the next part uh, where we're cutting out and everything. So we're done with this. Uh, unless you want to make more, you can do that later. And uh, let's go ahead and skip to the next part. Okay everyone, I went ahead and took the liberty of cutting all these out. Here's the bricks. They should look something like this, just like they did on the uh, uh, paper thing, and of course these are all like little squares, so we'll just put these to the side right now. Uh, in order to do this, of course you'll have to have a printer, or at least uh, a flash drive where you can put the uh, image files on and print them out at the, like Office Depot or Staples, any place that offers printing. Um, secondly, uh, you'll need these little one inch square blocks. Um, you can get bigger blocks to print these on, but of course you have to up the image size of the files as well. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors. I have a goofy pair of utility scissors. And a Elmer's all-purpose glue. Or you can use other glue, but this is the one I use. It works really well for this. Okay. First of all, I have three cubes. Uh, two to put the uh, textures on, and one for modeling, which you're going to use to kind of, uh, you know, make sure it fits properly before you actually glue it on, because once you glue it, there's not much you can do afterwards. So okay, you uh, you know, make sure it fits properly, like so, and then you just kind of put it there. It kind of looks like a bottle cap uh, once you flip the flaps over. Uh, what I try to do, because uh, it seems like the top sides are slightly bigger, even by just a little bit, so I try to find the side that looks like it's been cut, and then just uh, use that for the top sides, that way you have a little bit more room for the other sides. And just get these nice and uh, upturned like so. So you should have two like this now. Uh, we're going to take our glue. Uh, you find the two sides you want to put it on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side. You put just a little bit of glue on the edges. You don't want to put too much. And then what I like to do is smeared around with the cap just because you don't want big globs or else it will uh, get the paper wet and kind of nasty. So I spread it out so it's like a thin layer. You could also try probably using a glue stick. Uh, they probably have glue sticks that are perfect for this kind of crafting. I didn't think they would be good, but uh, you can try out different things. This is just how I personally am doing it. And of course you want to put some a little bit on the sides. Uh, should actually move a little bit closer. Uh, let me try moving the camera a bit more towards me. There we go, you can see a little bit of my bed over there. Anyway, you put a little bit on the sides, just enough where you can uh, uh, put the, tap, the flaps over them. Okay, now you're going to want to put them like this. Make sure to press down just enough to make sure you get all the air out and make sure it's completely flat up against it. And then you just press the tabs down. Uh, you may want to use uh, or bring with you a paper towel to wipe off the little bit of access glue uh, if you put a little too much, or excess rather, and um, you probably will, especially your first time. Anyway, then you take your scissors and you trim off the edges that are sticking out if you want to. Just makes it a little bit neater. Not all of them should be sticking out, but you should have a little bit of access that wouldn't hurt to do a little bit of pruning. There you go. Now you've got your first side. should look something like this. Um, now you're going to want to do the other side. I always try to make sure they're both facing the same way uh, when I do this, just for whatever reason. Uh, now we're going to want to do the same side, of course. 
put a little bit of glue and smear it around. There's no real set amount, just make sure it's spread specifically across the edges because that's where you want it to stick the most. Middle's not entirely as important, but I put a little bit in the middle anyway, just so it, uh, the entire texture stays on and you don't really have to worry about ripping or tearing when playing with them. Okay. Oh, and uh, in the background you have the liberty of seeing all the other blocks that I made which are actually really fun to make. Well, when you, when you just feel like doing something boring and tedious for a few hours. Okay, make sure it's the right direction that you want it to do, and just push it on. Make sure you center it, which should be easy with the little corner pieces. Uh, feel free to push it around just a little bit, but depending on the type of glue you use, this stuff dries really quickly, so you have literally a second or two before you your mistakes are permanent. And you will make lots of mistakes uh, doing this, trust me. My first blocks are ter terrible. Uh, well, not terrible, but some have air bubbles, some have smudges, tears, etc. Again, your goal isn't to make these perfect, just to make them look as best as you can. And again, trim off the edges, uh, get rid of all the excess glue, and try to you know, do your best. Now you have your top and bottom texture, Looks pretty good, I think, so far. Now what you're going to want to do is take another block, since that one's... Uh, you can use the same block if you wipe away all the excess glue, but there's still always a little bit that remains and sticks, and you don't want to have any worries about that. Uh, with textures like this, what I do is I push it just enough so it's sticking a little bit over the edge right there. Then I fold it just slightly. That, that way it's not right up against the edge and you can have a little playroom. And then what you do is you hold it tightly, and slowly fold it, making sure it lines up as best as you can manage. And then what I do is try to pinch the edges, that way they're, they're perfectly squared off a bit. Um, also, the one problem when doing this is you will get a lot of ink on your hands, and this stuff is really hard to get off. So I recommend maybe getting a pair of latex gloves, they're really thin ones. Um, it really does help. Okay. And then your hands feel nasty. I always try to wash my hands at least once or twice uh, per block, or uh, once av after every every other block. That's what I meant. Getting my words all mixed up. Um, okay. And then the last side, you can see how it connects to the other one just barely. But hopefully, when we actually put it on, it will fit just perfect. Um, so let's go ahead and do this now. Uh, first of all, just find the first side you want to start on. It doesn't really matter as long as the, the top and the bottom textures aren't entirely important. Uh, again, you want to make sure you have glue on just the edges, and then you're going to want to smear it around into the center, maybe add a little bit more if you feel like it isn't enough. But you want to go with the, enough just to barely coat the top. Uh, again, the one problem with this is uh, your mistakes are generally permanent since you don't have a lot of playroom. And then put just a little bit on the edge of the next side for the flat to go onto. And then you take your texture, put it down right here, and try to make it as even as possible and centered. Um, again, you're probably not going to do a perfect job. Even right now, I'm messing up just a little bit. Sometimes it will be a slanted angle or too, ho too high or too low, but that's why you have a little bit of extra to mess with it. And of course you're going to want to wipe off the extra glue, preferably with a paper towel. Don't use an actual towel or you may ruin them. And uh, you know, push down where the tab is to make sure that's uh, stuck on as well. Um, then of course you're just going to want to take your time. Uh, don't try to rush with this, or your blocks will come out horrible. Uh, also, like I said, once the uh, once the paper is glued on, don't try to pull it off like within a second. You literally have about a second or two uh, before it dries, depending on how much glue you have. Uh, if you try to pull it off, the paper will tear and it will just look horrible. Um, you can try to fix your mistakes. But normally, whenever I've tried to fix my mistakes, oops, in the way, uh, whenever I try to fix my mistakes, I normally end up making them worse uh, by ripping it, tearing it, or smudging it. 
uh, like some of the paper moves but not all of it and like I said just just get as close as you can to perfect um, the only way to get these done perfectly of course would have them professionally made probably by, my, by machines or something or uh, somewhere in China I guess they can probably do that and then once you're done, which I'm almost done since I only have one more side, um, these actually don't take that long to make. Uh, the longest part for me was doing the textures, and if you're using my texture pack, uh, you should have all of the, uh, pretty much all the blocks that I decide to do uh, pre-made uh, on the PNGs. So all you have to do is print them out. And then the longest part, the most tedious part, was cutting them out. Uh, tip for cutting them out though, don't try to make them perfect, but uh, do try not to have any uh, white edges along them, because that's worse than uh, cutting them off too soon. Also, make sure not to get any glues on your hands when you're pressing them down, or else it will get on the paper and kind of make them darker, uh, and it will look kind of weird. But anyway, uh, let's smooth this out a bit more. If you want to make them really smooth, you can uh, put them like on a really hard surface and press down. Uh, that's what I do sometimes. Uh, a little bit of glue may leak out, so I recommend doing it on like a paper plate or a paper towel, something you don't have to worry about. But I didn't really add too much glue, so none really leaked out. Okay, now you can see here, we did our first block. I'm not sure how clear it's going to be. The uh, lens is kind of weird about autofocus. Uh, it's pretty good on all sides. You can hardly tell that there's any imperfections. Of course, if you look close enough, you'll see them. Um, on the tops, uh, again, they kind of blend really well to the side. It's not going to be perfect, just to, especially how the textures work. Um, you can hardly see the seams. I mean, they'll be right here, but they're really well done. And again, it's really hard to see. Uh, you can see like right here, there's a little white flap. You can either just prune that down, which I prefer, although you may end up cutting the other textures depending on how uh, good scissors you have. And then you can put like a little bit of glue on there and press it back down. And it should smooth out. And there you go, your first Minecraft cube. Um, like I said, these are the easiest to do since you only have the top and the bottom and then the side, the one that wraps all the way around. And I think it looks pretty good. There's Glimmer's um, brick block. Now these, these are going to be a little bit harder. Uh, what you're going to want to do with these is, of course, you're going to want to do the top and the bottom. So actually, let's do those first. Uh, if you think you've gotten it so far, feel free to just skip, because that's pretty much the rest of the tutorial. But I'm going to show you how to do the more advanced blocks. It's not that hard. It just requires, of course, more flaps and a little bit more um, carefulness, caution, whatever term you want to use. It requires a bit more attention to detail just because you want it to match up and not look weird. Of course with this particular texture of his it's not too important because the sides don't really blend with the sides like it, it's not important really but the sides are really important because you don't want like the corner halfway to the middle of the um, of the other side. So you want to make sure the corners are actually on the corners. So okay, you get this, you get the two just like the other ones. These are a little bit easier. What you can do is you can bend them right at the corner, like in between the corner of the two other ones. Like this one's pretty obvious because you have the two bolts and then you just fold it in between. Again, you're not gonna get this perfect, but what you can do, if you feel it's not perfect, is after you fold it, or even before, you can just press it against the corner and look for yourself. As you can see, this has a little bit of flap over the edge of this one. Just a little bit. I'm not sure if you can tell much. Um, but essentially what it allows you to do is fold it over and make sure you don't have any wood or white from the bottom showing. Uh, I suppose the way you can combat this is print on both sides, but that would be a waste of both ink and it would probably make it a little too mushy, the paper I mean. Um, so yeah, you just want to do this with all four of the sides. Uh, you're going to want to make sure the furnace is facing, the the face of it is facing the way you want it to face. 
And again, I always pre-fold these before I put it on, that way it's a lot easier and you're not uh, screwing around too much with the other stuff. Uh, fold this like so. And one more and we're almost done. Okay, that should be good, more or less. Um, let's see, that's the, this is the front, these are the sides. Let's go ahead and start with the tops again. You're going to want to find the top that you want it to do on. I generally do it on the cut side. Oh, and uh, as previously mentioned, I'm not sure if you can see my finger well, but that's just from doing one block and it's already black. And yeah, this stuff is really annoying to get off, especially with the glue, it kind of like soaks it into your hand even more which is really bad for doing some of these because you don't want the black to smudge off on the uh, on the textures either so again some latex gloves something that will be easier to wash this stuff off of would be recommended before starting but of course if if you can't then you know more it, it's just one of those things that make things easier and again you just want to do the top and the sides with a very loose amount uh, the sides are going to have access just because it's really hard to do, especially with a, a tube of glue. Um, would be a lot easier with a glue stick, as I mentioned previously. So you could try those to see how well those will work. I'm not sure. I know they have uh, glue sticks that are specifically for crafts, crafting. So uh, you'll want to try to get some of those. Ooh, crap. This one slid when I was pushing it down, and it wasn't entirely centered. Luckily, I was able to pull it off before it stuck too much. I don't think there was enough glue, so put a little bit more in the center and on the sides. And then we'll just try this once more and hope for the best. Try to put it into the center as best as you can, like so. I'm probably not uh, showing this off very well, especially with the angle of the camera. Believe me, if I could attach it to my head, that would be a lot easier for both of us. Uh, you can see here um, some of the corners around the edges uh, a little bit more than they were supposed to be and it's not entirely centered properly but it's really hard to tell unless you really look at it. Um, that's also what the flaps serve a purpose as. It helps uh, cover any mistakes you would make when placing these. It's The flaps aren't entirely necessary but it does help a lot. Oh, And right there when I was uh, clipping I made a tear. You can kind of see it a little white spot. takes a moment for it to focus. But again, since it's going to be on the side, it shouldn't be too noticeable. So let's go ahead. And already my fingers are feeling nasty from this ink and the glue. Uh, being, I'm not exactly OCD, but when I have stuff on my hands, it like bothers me a lot. So okay, we're almost done with just these two blocks. And sorry if this video is kind of dragging on. Just trying to give as much detail and uh, show the entire process as possible while trying to make sure that there's a you know proper amount for the video and then you want to spread these out on the sides of course you don't want big globs that's always a bad thing Put a little bit more on top spread it out and top and again you want to make sure they're facing the way you want them to face this texture doesn't matter so much simply because it's pretty universal in whatever way you want to put it. Okay, and we have this one done. Okay, let's see. Let me just trim these edges, but be careful. You don't want to cut the other pieces like I did with the other one. Uh, you may do that a few times. I still do it occasionally. You get better with more practice, obviously. And then you find your own techniques. Mine probably aren't the best, but they're the ones I've learned. And let's see, side, 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 and that's the face. Okay, how I do these is I glue just the edge first. Um, well, let me show you. Since every one of them has a flap, I try to glue one with just the flap first because uh, at the end you're going to have one flap and you don't want it to go over the other ones. So try to center this as much as possible. There you go. This one isn't going to come out as good simply because I, I screwed up with one of the uh, corners. 
So push this down, make sure it's glued, and you'll still have this up. But that's because when you get to the last one, you want to put a flap down there and then put this one over it. So you leave this one hanging for now. Then you might as well put the uh, furnace face uh, next. Again, uh, stick to just the corner of the uh, sides, and then just smear it into the middle because you don't want that much anyway. So just smear a bit, maybe add a little bit more just for extra. Make it nice and smooth, so you shouldn't see you shouldn't really see too much white. And then you simply place your texture over this, trying to line it up with the sides and the top and bottom. Press it on nice and good. Wipe off the edges, and I'm just going to wipe it on my pants, just because these are old pants anyway. Um, <laughs> I could make a joke right there, but I feel it's a little inappropriate. So let's go ahead and do this. And again, you're going to want to glue this tab down before you glue the other ones. You don't actually have to. I don't feel like it's entirely necessary to use this much glue or make sure every single side is good. Because to be honest, with the ones you wrap all the way around, I really don't feel like you have to put glue on every side, like just the front and then the end one. But the reason I do it is simply because I feel like it makes sure the entire thing stays on and nothing will rip or come off easily. I mean, it's still paper, it's going to rip, especially if you're rough with it and don't take care of it. But you can always make them again or uh, put new ones over it. I mean, these are wooden blocks. The only way you're going to ruin them is maybe soaking them in water, which I have no idea why you would do that anyway. Unless for some reason you think, hey, it's Minecraft blocks. Minecraft blocks can take water anyway. Although I did think of a way how to do these with plastic, but it would be a lot harder to do, and the, and the ink would probably come off anyway, unless you laminated these. Um, but yeah. Uh, in the later versions, I'm hoping I can put magnets in these, so they can actually stick to other blocks. Uh, this one, I didn't push the corner down all the way, so you can see like a little bit of bubble right there. It's really hard to tell unless you actually take the block and look at it, like really close. Um, the bubbles don't really cause a problem, and you can push them down, and they'll generally stick. You can always put a little bit of extra glue there to make sure they stick. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the whole reason I uh, do four flaps for ones like this, like I did it with the, uh, with the chests, the jukebox, I think, the melons, and something else. Uh, oh, uh... Pretty much anything that requires multiple sides, like a, like the uh, crafting table, it actually has to line up with the top. Uh, what I did with that is, uh, well, I didn't do it with this one, and you can see these have like a thicker side. I had to pinch them together with glue, uh, and having four flaps eliminates that, or mostly eliminates that. And we only have one more side, and our gift to Glimmer will be done. I don't really know Glimmer that well. I mean, I know he's a really nice guy. I talked to him on the forums before. He's a fellow texture pack artist. Uh, he has a really great texture pack, Steampunk, obviously. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, of course, I'm not a huge Steampunk fan, but my uh, my moderator, or my head moderator on my server, Luke, freaking loves his texture pack. Uh, his, his dad actually blocked Minecraft on his computer. Like, he can't connect to any website with Minecraft in the URL. URL. Uh, so I actually downloaded his texture pack for him and gave it to him. So yeah, he, he really likes that texture pack. And Glimmer is a really nice guy. If I asked him, asked him questions on how to like animate things for a texture pack. I don't think I really have the skills to do it. Like I, I know how he did it. Like I asked the process. But uh, I, I don't really know how to actually design the textures for that. And as you can see, the last one on this side is done. Now we just put it on the last... Oop. I want to make sure this is fully folded. Folded. Ugh. Speech impediments today, apparently. And put a little bit on the corners. And again, I really don't feel like you have to put any in the middle, but I do it just to have a little bit of extra hold. And flip it over, and you are done. And then just flatten it out as much as you can. Wipe away all the extra glue. Um, you can see right there in the corner, wait for the lens to focus, the little white right there that's uh, exposed from the underside of the paper. 
Uh, there's two things you can do. You can trim it, but you risk the chance of damaging the other ones like I did. I always try to trim it as much as I can without damaging it. Then I take what's left, uh, flip the underside as much as I can. I put glue, just a little bit of glue. You don't want too much. Kind of rub it in under there and then push it down and make it hold. And you can do that with any white you see. Just trim it or glue it. Try to do whatever you can. You could even use like a pen to color it. Because even black would be less noticeable in most textures than, uh, than the white itself. Like if you're doing snow, that wouldn't be a problem at all. But here you go. Here's an unlit furnace from Glimmer's Texture Pack. All the different sides, the tops, and the front. Of course, it's not lit, but um, you can always do a lit one too. Um, to compare, because his is kind of hard to see with the darker textures, uh, here's a furnace from my pack. The different sides, the front, and top and bottom. So yeah, um, in this tutorial I'll be posting all the things, all the uh, materials that you'll need in, in case you didn't see them in the video. Uh, I'll also give websites and you know suggestions on where you can find this stuff, like these blocks. Uh, I got these from Hobby Lobby. They were a bit expensive though, but I found a website that sells a bunch of them cheaper. Uh, however, unless you're buying a bunch of them, it would be better just to go to Hobby Lobby because there's like $10 shipping if you're just in the United States. If you're out of state, probably worse for you, or out of the states rather. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I'll be linking uh, a save file that has all of the blocks that I've done so far. Uh, so all you have to do is print them out, cut them, and paste them. And yeah, pretty much anything else you'll need will be in the description. I hope this video helped you all. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.